Yeah, this is this is an urban legend that goes straight to the heartstrings. It wants to, you know, make you feel bad before it terrifies you. What's up, Rad Fam? It is pouring out rain tonight where I'm at, and with this spooky atmosphere with the thunder in the distance, in case you can hear it, I just thought it'd be the perfect time to jump into a terrifying urban legend. And today, I want to go deeper into the iconic Mexican urban legend called La Llorona. Now, I did look up how to pronounce that, so I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it right. If you've been a RadFam member for a good minute, I mean a real good minute, or you've just seen older videos of mine, when I covered some of the scariest Mexican urban legends, this was actually on the list. But with the new movie coming out, I thought it'd be really cool to dive a little deeper into the scary story, try to maybe uncover some truth behind it or the history, the origin, and maybe different variations of this spooky tale. So let's get to it. But real quick, before we jump into the spookiness that is today's video, I just want to give a real quick thank you to the Rad Fam for being patient. I got a few messages wondering where I was last week because I didn't post a video last week. But for those that didn't see the community post I made, I really just wasn't feeling well last week. And on top of that, I am very passionate about making YouTube videos. I love making content to share with you guys, but because I like making YouTube videos so much, behind the scenes with the data and the analytics, the numbers, it can just, it can get easy to become kind of obsessed with analyzing your channel and yourself, seeing what you're doing right, more importantly, seeing what you're doing wrong, it seems like. And so because of that, it can get pretty easy to start thinking a little negatively, but I just need to take a step back, take a moment, take a mental health breather, which is something I highly recommend everyone do whenever they need the chance. I decided I just wanna focus on making some creepy fun content to share with you. But with that, it is time to jump into the scarier legends. So let's get to it. The first thing I like to do in these videos is try to get a basis of understanding of what this creepy story is and why it's so creepy and maybe where it comes from. So for that, we are going to my trusty favorite website, Wikipedia. Don't know why I did it like this, like I'm a little salesman. <laughs> oh, look, there's Frankie. In Mexican folklore, La Llorona is also called the weeping woman, is a ghost of a woman who drowned her children and now cries while looking for them in the river, often causing misfortune for those that are near or that happen to hear her cries. <sighs> Yeah, this is, this is an urban legend that goes straight to the heartstrings. It wants to, you know, make you feel bad before it terrifies you. The urban legends that have some complexity to the main person in them, you know, make me kind of confused because when it comes to ghost stories and scary stories, it's just very easy to write that off as like, oh, it's an evil ghost or demon and it's just out to scare you or eat your soul. I don't know why I said like so cavalier, that is terrifying and um, you know, that's a lot to take in from a story, but it's easy to just write them off, right? Like, oh, they're evil, they're scary. That's what they are. But then comes along a, an urban legend like this where they're a little more human, you know? There's more to their actions than just nightmare fuel. So here's this poor woman who, for whatever reason, took her own children's lives, which is horribly tragic, and that's a lot to take in just right there. But now she has to live with the guilt for the rest of eternity, roaming bodies of water, looking for her children, thinking about what she did. Oh God, that's, that's a lot. Now, as for the history of this urban legend, like is there any truth behind it? It really doesn't seem like there's any concrete evidence that there's any one situation that inspired this urban legend. Now, tragically and unfortunately, this isn't something that hasn't happened before. It could be something like this is an event that maybe happened more than once or it's an event that people thought about happening and from there a horribly tragic ghost story could be created. Now this urban legend, like many of the others we've covered on this channel, if not basically all of them, there are multiple variations to this one story. There are different descriptions of the woman. There are different events that are said to take place. There are different ideas of what she'll do if she finds you. Now while there are so many versions of the story and it really is hard to pinpoint when an urban legend started, it does seem like this one can be traced back to the 16th century. In one version, an indigenous woman falls in love with a Spaniard and they have three children together. But this is a time period where the relationship has to be kept under wraps. They can't let anyone know that they're together or that they have three children. Sometime later though, the Spaniard marries a wealthy woman. The indigenous woman gets so angry. She takes the lives of her three children and then immediately regrets it and throws herself in the river. Oh my gosh, this is such a tragedy. Ever since, her spirit has been wandering nearby, crying out in pain, my children. Well, that's certainly a lot to take in. That is a very sad story. That is tragic. Now, while this version can be told to anybody, children or adults, it does seem like it has 
has a little bit more of a mature tone to it. It could be seen as like a warning to parents if they put their needs or their emotions before their children that, you know, something bad would happen. Now, of course, when urban legends are told to teach a lesson, they're going to be more exaggerated because at the end of the day, they are supposed to scare you into teaching a lesson. The ones that want to teach you a lesson. Sometimes they are just scary just to cause nightmares. Like I said, though it can be different depending on where you hear it from, it's typically said that this woman's ghostly figure will appear in either an all white or an all black gown and will have a veil covering her face of the same color and that she has very long dark hair. Now if you are so incredibly unfortunate enough to be roaming near a river or pond or lake, just any body of water at night, and happen to hear the cries of a woman in desperate state of her life wanting her children, oh it is said that you better turn around and run the other way because you do not want to get caught by this woman. But if you think, oh, okay, of course I'll run the opposite way. Mm, it's a little more complicated than that. Some say that even if you hear her cries and it sounds like she's from a far enough distance to where you think you're safe, that you can hide, that you can just walk briskly the other way. No, 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 her cries can be deceiving. She can actually be incredibly close like right behind you. And while your back is turned to her, she'll latch onto your shoulders and bring you down to the bottom of the river where you will meet an untimely death. Maybe don't take a midnight stroll along that riverbed. You know, this could happen. Or, you know, you could just slip on a rock and like fall in and, and also maybe drown after hitting your head. So that's also horrible. So, you know, maybe stick to walking along riverbeds when there's other people around and preferably during daylight hours. And if you are an adult and you think that keeps you safe from being victim of this urban legend, oh, nope, nope. Well, yes, a lot of these urban legends talk about La Llorona kidnapping children because she's so desperate to have her own children back that she doesn't really pay attention that they're not her kids or she so desperately just wants to have children again so that she will latch onto those children thinking that they're hers or wanting them desperately to be hers. These stories do tend to talk about out. La Llorona kidnapping children. That doesn't mean adults get a free pass. Nope, apparently she can do the same to you. And uh, just as scary, honestly. And if you do manage to run away before she's able to grasp you and again, pull you down to the bottom of this river, sometimes that's just not enough and that hearing her cries alone will curse you. So while she might not get you this time, there's other opportunities where she may show up and, and claim your life. So yeah, all around, just don't go to riverbeds at night. That sounds like the best bet to like stay away from this ghost that's going around the bottom of rivers and lakes looking for her children's corpses. Oh, wow, okay, that was dark. I didn't need to go there, and yet I did. Another version of this urban legend that I think is terrifying and one to share because it's also commonly told, it's pretty similar to the one I just shared with you, but instead of Lirona taking the lives of her own children, it said that a young teenage girl had a child out of wedlock and it brought shame to her family because of the time period, it's very sad. And to cover up what her daughter did, her father took the baby, took it to a river, and did the thing. And in such a state of utter heartbreak, it said then that she jumps into the river trying to save the baby and she also passes away. And that's why her spirit is stuck along riverbeds or lakes because she's searching the area for her child that she wasn't able to save. Oh, again, this is this is quite a heartbreaking tale. It's a doozy, right? I prefer my scary stories, just scary bad guys. Because now I feel bad for her, but also I don't want my soul to get taken. I don't want my life to be ended while going for a midnight stroll on, on a nature path that happens to be beside a river, you know? Now, as for why, this urban legend exists or why people would spread it besides it just being a creepy tale to tell while on a camping trip around a fire near a river or a lake. This urban legend could be spread to teach children not to walk around lakes and rivers and ponds by themselves at night because of the danger. So if there's a scary woman that's said to be lurking in the waters that will reach up and snatch you when you're not looking, or if you hear her crying that it's going to curse you for life, that will, you know, get into kids' minds and probably 
probably adults too, let's be real, I'll get into mine, it already is in mine. It will teach them not to go near these places because there's a very real threat, you know? Like I said earlier, you can, in the dark, you can slip on the riverbank and trip over a rock and then hit your head and fall into the water and drown. There's just um, many reasons to teach people to be afraid of bodies of water at night, especially by themselves. So you can see how that could influence the story and have people spread such a terrifying tale. But I think that does it for today's deep dive into the scary urban legend that is La Llorona. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you liked it and if you did please give it a big thumbs up so I know you enjoyed it and want to see more urban legend deep dive explanations in the future. I really love covering urban legends. They're my favorite on this channel. And down below let me know have you heard the story of La Llorona and if so does the version that you heard differ from the one I shared in this video? I would love to hear about it and talk about it down in the comments below. And until next time keep it the radness and I'll see you real soon. Bye. No midnight swims for me, you know, I'm, I'm good.